little too much, the Beatles' hair was too long, Prince is obscene. This year, outraged parents even demanded congressional hearings. And in one extreme case, a father says the music, specifically Ozzy Osbourne's heavy metal music, made his son take his life. What you're about to see is Ozzy Osbourne in his music videos and some kids we taped who are heavy metal fans. What you're about to hear is the song Suicide Solution that a grieving father says contributed to his son's death. A normal kid there who really doesn't show any signs of any depression at all and happy and all of a sudden six hours he's dead. Uh, no one can explain it. Other than the only thing we know is he was listening to this music. Jack and Jacqueline McCollum's 19-year-old son, John, shot himself in the head the night of October 26, 1984, while listening to the music of Ozzy Osbourne. The police photo shows the headphones were still on when he died. He had been um, dead for quite a while when I found him, so it was, it was horrible. Um, still pretty fresh uh, in your mind, um, isn't it? Yes. You know, there's not a day that... It, goes by that I don't, um, you know, think about it. And I just kept saying, why? What was the reason, you know? He was fine, and then uh, my daughter was, um, I was talking to her, and I said, why? Why did he, you know, kill himself? And she said it was the music he listened to, Mom. When the police arrived at the McCollum's house, they found Osborne records still on the turntable. Uh, final song on that side of the record was Suicide Solution, which and to me says, made your bed, rest your head, but you lie there and moan. Where to hide? Suicide is the only way out. Trying to find a clue to his son's death, Jack McCollum has spent hours searching the lyrics of Osborne's music. Some of the lyrics of Paranoid. All day long, I think of me, but nothing seems to satisfy. I think I'll lose my mind if I don't find something to pacify. Can you help me? Oh, won't you blow my brain? Now the McCollums are suing Osborne and CBS Records, suing for damages in the first case of its kind. How important was Ozzy Osborne and his music to your son? Unfortunately, he was uh, John's idol. I would wake him up in the morning, and uh, he would have the, his uh, headset on, and the music would still be going. The boy must have been pretty messed up before he ever heard an Aussie record. And uh, I mean, I can't help that, you know. I feel very sad for the boy, and I feel uh, terribly sad for the parents, because as a parent myself, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be pretty devastated if something like that happened. But now, if, and I, and I have thoughts about this. If, it was, if the boot was on the other foot, I, I couldn't blame the artist. CBS Records wouldn't comment on the suit, but Osborne's attorney, Howard Weitzman, did. What happens if you lose? I think the effect in the industry would be disastrous. I think everybody that writes a song, every actor that speaks a line, every author that writes a piece, every screenwriter that writes a script is going to be looking over their shoulder, afraid that whatever they say could be misinterpreted by some very small percentage of individuals. And the real problem with a case such as this is they have totally misinterpreted what Ozzy meant to say. What did Ozzy mean to say? The word suicide solution is meaning suicide as a liquid, like solution as a liquid, not, like, not a way out. And the song's about like the dangers of alcoholism, like alcohol will kill her just like any other drug will. You know? It's just wine is fine, but whiskey's quick, as suicide is slow with liquor. And that, that, you know, that's easy. You know, it's, just, it's just a terrible case of misinterpretation as far as I'm concerned. I don't think that we can prove that Ozzy Osbourne wanted John McCullough to pull the trigger. But the point is that they knew that this record was going to encourage or promote suicide. Tom Anderson is the McCollum's lawyer. He's also a born-again Christian, one of a growing number who have mounted a campaign against heavy metal music, insisting on its link to the rise in teen suicide. I've been studying this problem now for a year. And uh, there's a trend, and it's a frightening trend. Uh, and I'm concerned about that aspect of it. I think that we have in this case uh, uh, opposing forces of Satan and God. And I'm not trying to turn people into frogs. There's no, there's no backward masking. There's no hidden secret messages at all. It's just a goof off. It's just entertainment, you know. It's like Ozzy puts his mask on and goes on and does his performance. It's just an art form 
my form of art, that's all it is. I think your music does affect kids. I hope it entertains them. I hope it just makes them feel good. Osborne's form of entertainment in one concert included biting the head off a bat, but his audiences loved it. His latest album is in the top ten. I'm not what my image portrays me on stage. It's just a role that I play. I think the parents' fear comes from your role. That's what they're afraid of. You see a far more violence in a Tom and Jerry flick than you ever see on Ozzy Osbourne concert. I mean, that's where it's, if you're going to get down to it, kids of three and four watch, watch his mouse get, get his brain bashed in every morning on, on American television. Isn't that harmful? If you're going to start with Ozzy, you know, carry on, you know. Are we going to stop everything? And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's all I keep saying to myself, why me? Osborne isn't the only heavy metal act parents are afraid of. Groups like Motley Crue, Wasp, and Iron Maiden feature death's heads, monsters, and satanic pentagrams. This Twisted Sister video became a heavy metal anthem for kids. All right, mister. What do you want to do with your life? I want to rock. <laughs> And this transformation is exactly what parents are afraid of. It's not harmful. It's just plain rock and roll. Just like back in the 60s when you have long hair, you would consider it different. Just the 80s. We couldn't walk around looking like everybody else. You know, it's, it's boring that way. If I didn't have music, I think I'd go crazy. Really? <laughs> yeah. Heavy metal music. Are you all Ozzy Osbourne fans here? Ozzy Red. Yeah. Now to let the people know that, you know, there's music there for you. I think the biggest message in heavy metal music is your parents aren't going to like this. They're into symbols that are obscure, not because they're trying to hide their meaning for, for some satanic purposes, they like obscure images because it gives kids something to hold on to that their parents won't understand. Patrick Goldstein writes a rock column for the Los Angeles Times. As long as uh, kids want to have a music of their own and want to have a sense of symbols and secret codes that will be their own, just like kids who want to have their own private club up in a treehouse, things that their parents don't understand, then they'll always be heavy metal. Heavy metal may be a badge of defiance for most, but no one will ever know exactly what it meant to John McCollum. That's really the hard part. We were extremely close. He was non-rebellious, and he didn't appear to have any problems that anyone was aware of. We still have never run across any signs that he would commit suicide. None. But Dr. Michael Lightman, a psychologist hired by McCollum's own lawyer to assess his son's mental state, thinks McCollum missed the warning signs. He was a pretty depressed young man who was wrestling with some complicated issues. He spent an incredible amount of time alone listening to Ozzy Osbourne music with his headphones on and nobody else around. He needed to drink a lot when he was in a social scene in order to have a good time. His dad said that John was happy, they had a great relationship normal kid? Jack wasn't attuned to some of the symptoms of depression that I am. For example, John dropped out of school when he was 16 or 17. Jack's a college graduate. He's a professional. Uh, it seemed to me in looking back that Jack should have taken this as a serious sign of something's wrong with his son. He only understood a very obvious aspect of his son. He didn't understand the deeply troubled aspect. So he's grasping for issues, and the Ozzy Osbourne issue is a very powerful one. What do you say to the people who say that what you're doing in this lawsuit is turning away from your responsibility and your own unhappiness and putting the blame on Osbourne? What I would say to them is that I'm suing because I do really truly believe that the lyrics in these songs influenced my son to commit suicide. What we're doing will not bring my son back, we know that. 
but I'm saying this to the parents out there. Take a good look at your kids and uh, uh, just watch over them because it, it can happen to anyone. I have a responsibility, but I, I can't be everyone's godfather. I can't sort of watch over everybody's every move. What do you do? Is music going to be banned? That's the only way you'll ultimately stop it. Ban music, period. Rock and roll.